It's been about a month since the last layout update, but how much progress have I made since then? Hi everyone, I'm Martin. Welcome back to Donington Castle and World Railway. Before we get stuck into today's uh, layout update, I just want to say a very quick thank you to all of you. Uh, the channel's been going less than six months, uh, already over 500 subscribers um, and lots of great feedback, uh, questions and other interactions. So uh, seeing all that gives me lots of motivation to keep making these videos and to keep showing you the progress that I'm making on the layout. If you're watching this but you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. It's free and really, really easy to do. It really helps to get the message of the channel out to people who, who, who might be interested in this wonderful hobby. Now, let's uh, get on to today's topic, which is a layout update. Um, my priority, um, as you'd have seen from kind of previous videos, it was really getting uh, the Southern Main Line tunnel into a point where I could um, put the baseboard on top um, and start laying the track. Uh, so that's the place that we're going to start. Um, but there's also been lots of other uh, progress in, uh, in other areas, so I'll take you through all of that and also talk to you a little bit about what are the upcoming uh, tasks that we're going to be working on. So let's get over to the Southern Main Line and take a look. And we have now reached a really exciting moment um, because this section of tunnel that's going to run underneath this top baseboard is finished um, and we're now in a position to fix this board down um, probably forever. So um, just need to make sure that everything is good. Um, otherwise, we'll get the screwdriver out and get that back in place. Now, this is quite an exciting moment um, because once this board is back in place, that means that we can lay finally the main lines on this top section here. So uh, I decided I'm gonna film uh, this moment for posterity. Um, and it'll be the last time we get a, a kind of a good look inside any of these areas, uh, except with the um, aid of a, a camera on a train. So let's get it in place. Now this bit I'm doing here is um, just to add a bit of a support between these two boards uh, just to make um, them as level together as possible. So uh, this has all been um, pre-fitted. There's effectively a strip of wood under there and I'm just um, screwing them back together. Then, the next piece of this jigsaw is just to make sure that that slots into place there. Uh, this has been fixed down before, hence why all these screws are in there. Um, so, there are existing holes in here. So, that's why they're all uh, dropping straight back into where they were previously. Uh, I've got one more to add in there. Okay, and there we go. Uh, so you can probably see just in the bottom of the shot, I've already started laying some of the cork that's gonna be the outer line in this case here. So this will be our um, slow up line, I believe. Um, so trains will be running this way, mostly. Um, so next jobs now around here um, are going to be, um, I can now finish off this little bit um, actually, I'm going to leave that for a moment. I'm going to get the cork laid around here. I'm going to get the track uh, laid as well. Um, and then we can see uh, what we can do about finishing uh, this banking off around here. Um, at some point, I can then um, get this. I don't know if this is in shot or not, but I'm just kind of popping the tunnel mouth in to show where that's going to go. So there's a piece of wood still to go on there. Um, obviously, our vaccine boards will then go back in place. Um, but there's no point putting them up for now um, because we just need, uh, so we, we still need some access to this area obviously to get the cork in place. Um, there's one more screw in there. I will just um, fix it into place. Just to keep that 
Okay, then let me just back that off here. Yeah. Uh, so obviously there are a few little gaps here and there, uh, but, but they're going to get covered up uh, either by cork um, or some landscaping. Uh, this is probably going to be uh, a slope that heads off um, and we're going to have potentially our uh, TMD in this area here. So uh, we won't worry too much about that for the moment. Uh, likewise, um, here we're probably going to have to have um, a retaining wall. You probably can't see very well um, that then uh, tapers out uh, maybe um, into uh, more of an embankment. Um, but again, we have kind of really worked out what that space in there is going to be. Um, so we'll come back to that another time. So just one last thing to do. You'll have seen uh, this view in the uh, tunnel video that I put out recently. Um, you can see now that it's looking a lot more enclosed in there. Uh, there's one space with some light, um, which is the access hatch that will get um, a little flap put on it. Um, so this will be a really nicely sealed tunnel. Um, so what we can do now is just test the coach running through that. And then that will roll back down the slope um, and stop hopefully somewhere that's grabbable. Um, but that's good. Uh, that means we've got uh, lots of clearance in there, which is great. On a previous episode, I talked through the process for landscaping that I use. Uh, so we'll be able to see most of that process um, because it's at different stages around the layout. Uh, this here is the same insulation foam that I talked about before. There's grab adhesive just to stick it down. Um, because I don't know exactly what's happening in this area, I've not gone to the next stage here, which would be plaster bandage over the top of that. Um, so that's just going to be sat there for a while. But that shows you just how rough the underlying um, layer usually is left at. And that will all be neatened up and tidied up um, when we have plaster bandage and then some homemade sculpting all over the top. So in this area, um, because this is white, I don't know how well this will pick up on camera, so I will rotate around a little bit. Um, this is our insulation film that's been built up with plaster bandage, and then this is uh, the homemade sculpting mortar over the top of it. Um, this is here, then that same um, sculpting mortar painted, um, and then here it is um, with grass um, added on top. Um, obviously, this bit's not finished yet. Uh, so it'll be exactly the same process going on here. Uh, once this is dry, this has been like this for about a week. It's been so cold that it's just, the water's just not evaporating out um, and it's not drying off. Um, so we'll just leave that a little bit longer before we paint that up. Um, there's still the question of fixing this chalk uh, rock face here. Um, it, it, there's kind of layers and layers going on there. Um, I'm still not happy with how that is going at the moment, um, but I will focus on that um, in a concerted, or I'll make a concerted effort to get that done at some point now. You can see I added one extra piece of um, plaster rock face here. This is from a Woodland Scenics rubber mold. Um, I just literally used a little small piece of the mold, chucked some spare plaster from casting the tall sections in there. Um, and then just kind of put that on there to represent a kind of a second kind of step um, when they were obviously digging this area out. Um, so that's going to get painted the same as down the bottom here um, and then all these sides around here. Uh, this is all going to um, look like uh, the hillsides um, that you will see in a second. Now, as I said, I was going to do in the last layout update, uh, I started to add bushes to this area. The hillside, obviously, they'll continue a little bit um, as we work on that area down there. These are a mixture of Woodland Scenics uh, bushes uh, combined with some uh, rubberized horsehair and coir uh, that have been coated up. Um, I'll, I'll show though how I do that in a separate video. So this is uh, coir. Uh, I got this from Model Scenery Supplies. Um, and uh, in it, as I say in another video I'll kind of talk through how I turn that into those bushes uh, and then this is the rubberized um, horsehair um, there is a difference to them um, and you'll get a, more of a sense of that when I um, talk through how I did that in detail the retaining wall is growing ever so slowly um, I find repetitive tasks uh, really boring. So having to do kind of these, uh, kind of loads and loads of these. Um, having said that, I've got another batch um, that I'm working on, so hopefully we'll be able to extend this a little bit further. I've started working on some capping stones. So these are just laser cut two mil basswood. 
um, with some longer stones to run along the top of the wall uh, and then some shorter pieces to do these kind of little, I don't know what the technical term for, for these is, these kind of little caps at the top, just to make it look a bit more interesting. And these obviously line up with these um, uh, divides, I guess, between the uh, individual arches. Um, I still need to make a few tweaks to this because I'm still not perfectly happy with this, but I so say I'll, I'll kind of keep working on um, that retaining wall. And, uh, there's a lot to do, um, so I'm going to just, just kind of keep working away at it and hopefully we'll get um, somewhere and see some progress soon. So I've been working my way along the embankment, adding um, various bushes uh, and then some of the coir. Um, this is uh, gorse. Um, which is made from, uh, I believe it's Finnish moss, um, covered in some static grass and um, some yellow scatter. As you can see, I've been along the embankment also and started adding some of the trees that I made uh, in a previous video. Um, I'm gonna come back and add a few more of kind of different varieties uh, as and when I kind of get to making those. Um, you may also spot that the um, fence uh, the wire fence has all the wire in it now. Um, I wasn't happy with how that was weathering up, so um, I'm going to be painting it all in a rust color and then going over the top of that um, with some kind of weathering, uh, just to dull that down. Um, I've only got part of the way along, so here you can just see the kind of the the, the kind of untouched uh, copper wire. As I say, that will be dulling down um, in the future. So this is another little scene I've just uh, started working on. Uh, so we have a couple of lengths of uh, track on the heritage line that have obviously been lifted out. Um, they are cut to the right length for 60 foot, which I believe is the most common length that was um, used on railways when bullhead track was in use. Uh, so they've just been um, weathered exactly the same way as I would with normal track, uh, except that there is uh, rust on the top of the rail obviously um, because they've not been in use um, and then round it I've kind of added some ballast and um, over this end there is a, um, a ballast heap I might make that a bit bigger I'm not sure yet um, and then I tried a, a technique with grassing here that I put a, a thin layer of ballast down first then gone over the top with some four mil static grass and then once that's all dried gone over the top of that with some dirt and some additional ballast um, the idea being that then the grass looks like it's growing out from between uh, the ballast. Um, I still need to do a little bit more work on it, but it gives a little bit of a different effect um, to other parts of the layout. So um, as I say, still a work in progress, um, but I'm quite happy with how that's going so far. On the upper layer, you'll see that uh, there is track being laid and there is um, some super elevation going in. I will cover those in more detail um, in the future, um, show you uh, how I make the super elevation and also the process of getting all that put in place. Um, I then have started to lay cork for the outside line. Um, I'm going to be um, getting that installed as a complete circuit first, I think, um, to test out gradients and that kind of stuff. Um, you'll see it comes all the way around here with various stuff on top of it, waiting some of the um, wet sections at the moment. So let me just show you uh, sticking these uh, cork sections down. So um, big thick layer of uh, neat PVA on the back um, and then just um, get those um, in place. Um, as we go around a corner, I'm using shorter sections. Um, I know you can kind of cut down the middle and make kind of thinner sections and run them around the corner. Um, but for me, it's easier. These are cut five centimeters across, so 50 mil. Um, and I just cut them into shorter lengths and just kind of run them around. Uh, that seems to give you pl plenty of flexibility to do that. Um, so what I will do now is you need to remember when you're doing this um, that the PVA will want to uh, soak back up through that cork. Um, and if you're not careful, if you put something on top of it, um, it will stick to it as it's drying. Uh, but you do need to put some weight on top of that. So what I do is I will pop some wooden blocks on. Um, Right, you actually need one in this case. Um, and then put something heavy on top of those. Um, so worst case is I'm sticking a wooden block to my cork. Uh, so I'll take that off tomorrow. Uh, that will have dried um, by then. And that will have stuck that nicely down into place. 
One really quick progress update on this upper level. Uh, following on from the last episode of Track Talk, you can see that those points that I was working on are now in place. Um, I've had to put both of them in place um, just to make sure that the kind of the flow of the tracks works um, well. Obviously, my priority is getting this kind of near side line um, all the way around the layout, um, but. I think I'm going to have to kind of simultaneously work on the next line in as well um, and possibly even the other lines as well just to make sure that as I say when things like points are going in that, that the kind of the all the kind of the angles are right uh, and everything flows nicely. Uh, but that's good that means more track uh, and closer to running things on them. Um, as you can see the track uh, I'm just in the process of working on this next section here uh, but I'll talk you through a little bit more of the process for, for laying track in the next video. So let me do a very quick pan of the layout as it is um, today. As you can see, the heritage line is starting to come on in terms of the scenics. Um, I have got back scene boards um, mostly all the way around. In the far corner, just needs fitting in place. That's a bit fiddly to get to at the moment. Um, all the way around this side. And then on this end, the two big boards are made. They're just off at the moment, so I can work in that area. And then I've got one small little section to finish at the back. I'm leaning towards um, towards the end of the build process, um, painting these uh, with some clouds and a little bit of scenery as needed, um, filling in some of the gaps between the boards. Um, the prospect of fixing back scenes to all of that in this environment is not filling me with a great deal of confidence. Um, and I think actually a um, opportunity to actually try and learn a little bit of kind of painting skills, uh, maybe a little bit of airbrushing in there um, to, to, for some of the clouds. I think that might be an interesting thing to learn about. So um, that's definitely one to come back to towards the end of the build. But for now, I think uh, that gives a nice little framing um, of the layout. Um, down here, there's been no uh, work at all on our river scene. Uh, that Now that the tunnel section's getting a bit closer to being finished, I might think about this, um, particularly in the first instance, uh, the bridge uh, that's going to take the heritage line underneath the main lines here, because um, that's kind of a bit of a cornerstone, because all the other scenery is going to then lead off of that. Um, down the back here, you'll see that I've um, put some uh, baseboard in um, on the lowest possible level, uh, meaning that then that's kind of free to, to kind of sculpt in terms of uh, landscape. Um, over the back, um, there's been no work at all uh, on the station. Uh, I've also not um, fixed, uh, so, so I need to re-level some of the boards. Um, so I've got more space for the station on the main line and remove a little bit of space um, from the station on the heritage line. Um, so that board in the middle of shot right now, that needs to be lifted up. Um, I haven't decided whether it's going to be the whole board or whether I'm going to kind of cut um, part of it, lift the back part and keep the front section down. Um, and then obviously there's still a gap there where I need to do the same thing here. Um, I've decided that there's going to be a little siding um, off the um, slow line or the relief line if you, uh, use, great, uh, if you use Western region terminology. Um, so obviously that board needs, a part, at least part of that board needs to be at the high level. One of the things I really need to do in this area is get the uh, rest of the heritage line uh, the track painted and weathered and balanced it because uh, it's just this small section here that hasn't been done up to this point. Um, normally I can't run trains uh, when I'm doing that, that's why I'm kind of holding off on this. What I might do is wait until I have at least one running loop uh, on the upper level uh, before I do this because um, then I will at least have the ability to run some trains while I'm doing that, um, which for me is an important kind of part of the motivation. Um, part of the reason for building this is being able to come here uh, just sit down, switch off, well, switch on the track, switch off from life and just kind of um, enjoy running trains around. So um, if I can't do that, that kind of can sap away at some of the kind of the motivation to do stuff. So um, so definitely a, a good reason to get the upper line running before I start uh, getting that bit finished off. Um, can then start thinking about station platforms uh, with the success of doing um, the platform for Spin um, and some of the suggestions uh, that some of you made after that. Um, I'm feeling confident about getting those platforms done. Um, so we'll get that uh, design 
done onto the laser cutter and uh, hopefully start getting that built at some point soon. I hope you enjoyed taking a look around the layout and seeing some of the uh, areas that I've been working on. Uh, I've highlighted a few areas that are going to be tackled next. Um, so in the next layout update, hopefully I'll be able to give you some progress updates on all of that. Now, if you uh, haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. In a second, there's going to be a button right down there for you to do that. Um, really uh, simple and free to do. There's also going to be two other videos from the channel up there. So um, if you'd like to find out more about the layout here and what I've been doing in the past, then please uh, have a watch. But uh, thank you for watching and I will look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Bye bye.